What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. In today's episode, we are restoring this guy right here. And if you guys haven't heard about how I found this piece, make sure to go and check out my last video because it's uh, pretty cool. Anyways, let's get flipping, shall we? I found this piece at a thrift store the other day and I looked underneath when I got home and I realized that it was mid-century, authentic Danish teak. And of course, I immediately decided that I was gonna keep it, but it was pretty scuffed up and had some major wear and tear on it. And so I decided that I was gonna give it a little bit of a restoration. I don't know if this was used for a child's desk. There was some markings that kind of hinted at that, but it definitely had some damage to the finish on the top of it. There was tape everywhere. And I think that someone tried to refinish it before. And the reason why I say this is because there were some edges on the top that looked like they had been burned through, um, or the veneer had been burned through with a sander, unfortunately. But you know what? We are going to do the best we can and hopefully get this baby back to at least half its value. You know, that'd be cool because this puppy is highly expensive and I would like to maybe, you know, have it in case of emergencies. <laughs> Anyways, the first thing that we're gonna do is clean it and guys, let me tell you I have done so much research on how to restore Danish teak and Honestly, I found that the best way to clean any furniture in general when you're restoring it is just a, a cloth with with some water on it and That's it. You don't want to get any of the cleaning products into the wood So honestly, yeah, the best thing that I found is just a, a damp cloth so while doing my research, I actually stumbled across this account right here on TikTok, and this is where most of my information is going to be coming from. She is an amazing restorer of antiques, and she's also an apprentice cabinet maker, and this is her website that she has listed on her TikTok in case you don't have a TikTok account, but she is so unbelievably knowledgeable, and I just wanted to really give her credit because she's obviously had an impact on me in the way that I will go about doing things in the future. As for these legs, they were of course coming off of the main part of the desk and it was super easy to fix. You just have to unscrew the screw just slightly so that it comes out of the um, desk itself and then screw it back in. So for example, this one, the screw is all the way in the leg, but it is barely in the table. So you have to unscrew it slightly so that it comes out of the table and allows the leg to get closer, because right now it's just pushing the table away and the screw can't go anywhere to get tighter. And then you can just screw it all the way in and it becomes fastened again and nice and snug and secure. And now the finish. So, this so many people so many accounts do finishes you know in so many different ways um i found that a carbide scraper works well for me and then i saw that tiktoker do this on her furniture use a card scraper and my god was it easy holy crap this will forever be my method of taking off finishes. This worked like a charm and that, you know, maybe it's going to be different depending on how uh, the condition of the finish is. Fortunately for me, this was very easy to take off, but that was also probably in part um, caused by the fact that the finish was so torn up. But yeah, it, w it flew by and it was extremely satisfying. When doing this, I found it so much easier to push it away from you. You have so much more control that way and you don't have any worries about like, you know, digging into the wood. You just are pushing it off. And I like to put the majority of the pressure on the bottom of the blade, so the part that's closest to the wood. And you want to hold it as if you're trying to snap it in half. So you want all that pressure to be going straight in the middle of the piece of metal and just, yeah, just push down and push away from you. I think what originally drew me to this method was not only the fact that it is eco-friendly, I mean, you can't get more eco-friendly than just doing the work yourself, 
but it also just basically eliminates the risk of burning through the veneer with a sander. This you can take your time, you have much more control, and you're just taking off the top coat. It's pretty hard to take off like the actual wood. You're just wanting to get all that top coat off. Speaking of which, I was able to get the majority of it off, but unfortunately there was still just a touch in these little divots in the wood grain, and so I ended up having to go over it with a stripper, but that was a great excuse to use this new stripper that um, that TikToker actually mentioned in her account, which is Smart Strip. This stuff works using a technology called MyCell, and I am still kind of learning about this process, but to my understanding, it works similar to a detergent. Actually, detergents also use MyCell, or soaps in general use MyCells, and um, they essentially just expand the finish and lift it up off of the wood enough for you to scrape it off. And I, um, I think this technology is also used in like makeup remover and stuff, but even if you read on the case itself, if you get it on your skin, it says that it won't burn your skin and I can verify that. I, I accidentally got a little bit on my arm and yeah, it did not burn whatsoever. Of course, you know, you always want to be wearing protection and gloves and a respirator if that makes you feel more comfortable. But honestly, this stuff is really, really cool. It's, um, it's eco safe, I think, environmentally safe. Um, I can't, I don't think they can go all the way in saying that it's like eco friendly or environmentally friendly, um, but it is zero VOC and it works very similarly to soap. And you can actually make your own um, furniture stripper if you want to look that up. I'm actually gonna be starting to look into that a little bit more myself and just, you know, taking those little steps to uh, become more and more eco-friendly as I learn more stuff. Since I had already taken the majority of the finish off with the scraper, I just went ahead with a pretty thin coat of this stuff and didn't leave it on for too long either, um, and that got off most of um, the finish, it, actually all of the finish, and I left it on for maybe a half an hour. And so yeah, this stuff works really well. So one of the reasons why this woman doesn't uh, sand her pieces is one, she works in antiques, and with sanding, when you're dealing with antiques, you sand off all the patina, which is a big no-no in the antiquing restoration biz apparently so um she never deals with power sanders only hand sands if she like really needs to um and so yeah but also not sanding one saves you money and two saves on sanding paper which come in plastic which are you know manufactured of course and create waste and all that good stuff so uh if you can eliminate that why wouldn't you also, one thing that I learned recently is that in the UK, you have to have a permit to be able to use some strippers that are available to anyone in the US. And that's because these strippers are so hazardous that the person using it has to know exactly how to do it safely and dispose of it properly. Just some food for thought. So these drawers, obviously, you know, optimal scenario, I would want to take this hardware off before I applied stripper, but I honestly didn't really know how. Um, there wasn't any screws or, you know, things that were obvious to the eye when first looking at it. But I saw some glue under there and I thought that maybe the stripper would be able to kind of help the glue along its way to coming off. The hardware was already kind of loose, like you could kind of jiggle it back and forth. So I just applied a healthy coat of stripper and made sure to touch the edges of the hardware and left it on for the same amount of time as I did the rest of the stripper. And this is just after me putting stripper onto the drawers. And you can already see the finish kind of just lifting off of the wood surface. This stuff works incredibly well. So while I let that sit for a little bit longer, I went ahead and started polishing off some brass goodies that I found at the thrift store as well. And I did this just by taking a little bit of water and a soft steel wool sponge and a uh, little bit of Barkeeper's Friend. 
And this is a super easy way to polish your brass pieces. It shines it up so nicely and just makes it really nice and pretty. And when it comes to brass, a simple way to tell whether or not it's brass is to take a magnet to it. If it is brass plated, the magnet will stick. And if it is solid brass, there will be no pull at all. Also, these items, as well as many others, are now available on my Etsy store. So if you guys want to head to the description and click the link below, you can go find these items and many more. This is what the stripper has done with just a half an hour of work. It has lifted off the finish so effortlessly. It is so awesome. And has just removed any of that little finish that was left in the wood grain there that I couldn't get off with the scraper. Speaking of scraping, when you go to remove this stuff off of your piece, make sure to go in with a plastic putty knife. This will eliminate the chances of digging in with a metal scraper and harming your wood. And a plastic scraper is just a lot more uh, kind and forgiving to any, you know, accidents or anything like that. If you accidentally go in at the wrong angle or something like that, it's much more forgiving. Forgiving, It won't dig into the wood or anything. And when you are disposing of this stuff, make sure you are following your local guidelines because even though this stuff is considered to be eco-safe, it doesn't mean that it is eco-friendly and is gonna be, you know, beneficial to the dirt that it ends up in. Another incredible thing about this product is that it comes off with water. So I literally just had to get a wet rag and wipe it off. There was no mineral spirits, there was no other harsh chemicals that I had to put on top of this wood or in my lungs or anything like that. And it came off super easily. At first, it starts off a little bit, you know, slippery and kind of like greasy feeling, but you know you're getting it off when it kind of like when the when the towel kind of sticks to it and it feels a little bit more rough than it does smooth and slick with the product on. Um, but yeah, it's so easy, such effortless cleanup and no other chemicals needed. It's seriously, genuinely a wonderful product and I cannot recommend it to you enough. So my method with the hardware actually ended up working pretty well. The stripper was able to loosen up the glue enough to the point where I could just kind of pick off the, the chunks of it with the knife. And I was able to loosen up the edges enough to the point where I could just pop it up with my hand and get it kind of loose. And then I was able to see exactly what I was working with underneath once I was able to get it um, lifted a tad. And it was actually these two little dowels. How cute. So I couldn't actually like really lift it up with my hand. So I ended up going in there with this little chisel guy and I gently just just so gently pushed up on the um on the hardware and i made sure to be just so unbelievably careful because these guys can go through wood like no problem it's what they're made to do and i didn't want to ding the veneer but i was able to just lift it gently and pop it right out of place and it was pretty easy peasy so as you see, there are the two dowels and it was just glued down with um, this foamy glue. I don't really know what, you know, my glue types, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was really foamy and like sudsy. So yeah, and then I got going with the, with the other guys. So here is the piece completely stripped, completely cleaned, and here is the veneer burn that I was talking about where I thought that someone else might have refinished it because someone had burned through the veneer with a sander. Um, but this is the wood grain. My god. Literally immaculate. So beautiful. So to finish it off, I went in there and hand sanded with a 300 grit sandpaper and just made sure to get everything really nice and smooth.
And while we're here, I just want to acknowledge you guys and say thank you so much for all of your continued love and support. You guys have been amazing. I've been flipping furniture for just over a year now, and the response that I've been getting for my work is just unbelievable, and yeah, so thank you. If you guys are looking for other ways to help support me, I have a ways to support section in the description below if you are interested, where I have an Amazon wish list as well as a buy me a pizza because I don't drink coffee. Um, and I will also be offering services for my subscribers. I will be offering video tutorials for any questions that you guys may have and written replies to uh, detailed questions with detailed answers to help you guys with your flipping and restoration projects. So if you guys are interested in that, I will have the subscription service available in the next week or so. And uh, yeah, help me help you. <laughs> So after everything was sanded all smooth and pretty, I went over it with a vacuum and a tack cloth and then got going on the finish. Traditionally, a Danish piece would probably be finished with something like shellac, I'm assuming, or like a, um, a polyurethane type of situation. But you guys know me, I'm all about my wax eco-friendly finishes, so I went ahead and used a wax oil finish. And because teak is such an oily wood to begin with, I didn't want to leave the uh, wax oil on for too long. So I just went in small little sections and then made sure to promptly wipe off the excess as I went. This stuff is also perfect for giving a little bit of life back into old finishes. So I just went over the legs with a really light thin coat of the uh, wax finish and it just really made the legs pop again. So for the hardware, I'm using this glue right here and it's kept in the fridge and left out to thaw and I'm gonna talk about it more later, but for now, while it thaws, we're gonna get started on these drawers. They are a mess, and because I'm keeping this desk for myself, I'm honestly not too worried about getting the drawers flawless because, you know, I'm gonna have pens in there. You never know when a pen can bust because obviously in these drawers, a pen definitely did bust. And um, yeah, so I'm just getting the majority of the stuff that I can get off, just like the little scuffs and pen marks. And honestly, this magic eraser worked wonders, let me tell you. I honestly may never sand again. No, I'm kidding. Um, but obviously this, this drawer would be in way better shape if I actually took out the, the bottoms and sanded them down and got them all pretty and new again. But um, yeah, like I said, it's for me, so I'm not really worried about it. All 
right, now back to our glue. So this glue, the reason why it was in the refrigerator to begin with and needed to be thawed was because it is hide glue. And what hide glue is, 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 is it's exactly what it sounds like. It's, it's glue that's made from hides. And while that may not seem eco-friendly because, you know, vegan and all that sort of stuff, it's actually super eco-friendly because it uses the hides from things like cattle and pigs and, and livestock. So we're actually using the um, all parts of the animal instead of just letting the hides go to waste. And it's actually completely biodegradable, completely natural. So meanwhile, other glues are essentially entirely made of plastic. So I just learned about that recently and I made the switch to hide glue. It is an old recipe that's been used for years and years. Um, this glue actually is the one of the first of its kind where it's actually made in a liquid form. So usually hide glue comes in little crystals, kind of like, it kind of looks like brown sugar, honestly, and you have to melt it down yourself. But this brand is one of few that I found that actually sells it melted down like that in liquid form. So it's super user friendly, just works like a regular old glue and it lasts a super long time and is made from the same ancient recipe that we've been using since, you know, long before we had things like screws and power tools and all that sort of stuff. And it's super easy cleanup. Um, I'm using Q-tips right now, but it also comes up with water. And uh, yeah, so you can just get a wet cloth and, and wipe it up. I just wet my my uh, little Q-tips here and just wiped everything up and it, it came up super easily. Also, if you guys see any products that you want to buy yourself that I'm using in this video, please make sure to check out the links below. I will have all of my products there for you um, in the description. So yeah, make sure to check those out. The recommended drying time for this glue is 12 to 24 hours, so I let it dry for 12 and that seemed to do the trick pretty well. And I made sure to leave the clamps on there so that they would set nice and properly. But before I go ahead and show you guys the finished product, I just want to say thank you so much again for all of your continued love and support. I really appreciate it. And here is a little bit of a reminder of where we came from. I found this guy at a thrift store for $35 and it's worth $3,500. So that was the biggest score of my life. But honestly, I'm more thankful for the restoration journey that this piece has taken me on. I have learned so much in the past week and I hope that you guys have learned a little something as well. But anyways, here's the final product and stay flipping guys.